What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Tell Me More podcast presented by Major League Success. I have Lydia Ma- Maurer with us. She's with Rise Realty Co. And, um, you know, I'm super pumped to have, have you on, Lydia. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to come on here and just share your, your journey into, uh, you know, this, this crazy uh, real estate industry. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, John. And it was an absolute honor to be asked to join you today. So I'm very excited for this conversation. Yeah. And it's awesome because, um, you know, we've been social media friends, I would say social media friends, but we really haven't had the chance to, you know, interact and and really dive in to to get to know one another. So I always enjoy those episodes a little bit more. Obviously, I love all of my episodes and everyone that comes on, but it, it allows me an opportunity to kind of meet another, you know, high performing um, real estate agent in our, in our, in our market. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to fix that. We'll have to connect in person sometime, but you know, meanwhile, this is great. And I feel like I've had a chance to get to know you a little bit better because I am a regular on the um, morning real estate huddle while I'm drinking my coffee. I always try to tune into that and see what's going on with people. And uh, I've gotten some great ideas just off of that show and, you know, great information. So I feel like how I'm did you manage? Yeah. How did you first hear about that? Was it just through Facebook's us posting about it? Someone invite you to it? Uh, yeah, actually, Messina Hardman with Rapid. Okay. Uh, we had lunch a few weeks back and um, got on the topic. And so she invited me in. And uh, so I've been pretty much joining in ever since. Yeah, for those. No, that's awesome. I mean, for those that um, don't know what we're talking about, um, Monday through Friday on the app called Clubhouse. And if you don't know what that is, I always explain it as a um, uh, social audio app. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like, too. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a, an interactive podcast. But anyways, um, you know, it's a group of real estate professionals. Uh, it doesn't have to be agents, but, you know, vendors, title company, lenders, um, you know, home inspectors, uh, pretty much anyone. And I'd like to start getting, honestly, I would like to start getting some new build reps in there and, yeah. um, you know, even contractors, right? Yeah. You know, just the whole point is, you know, we come together every single morning, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m with one goal of just helping each other get better at business, right? In real estate. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate you listening in and, and, you know, showing that support. So. Well, it's a great way to get your day started and just get yourself in that business mindset and, you know, start the day. And I know we're a little bit off topic already, but that's okay. But I will say, I mean, honestly, that's one of the things that that was kind of like a, um, a, a real estate hack for me when you know i was really selling was um, i would always try to do a training video watch it either on youtube or something mm-hmm. eight to nine a.m and mm-hmm. then nine a.m i'd hit my phone calls yep. you know and i just go right into it and that was the one thing that kind of just helped me get my mind right yeah i'm a big podcast person so you know real estate uncensored if you've ever heard of that it's one of my favorites i'll try to jump yep. on that in the morning and yeah just to get your mindset right and get some ideas and yeah no, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for, like I said, jumping on and, and just having support and listening in every single day. So, but Lydia, we always start with growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I always, I find that typically as I, as I um, interview more and more people, usually there's something either, you know, uh, from their, their past that's either growing up or early career or something along those lines that has a great impact on their real estate business. So let's start from the beginning. What was, what was life like, you know, growing up for you? Um, you know, were you always like this entrepreneur or, you know, did you have someone in the family kind of just fill me in growing up to to high school years? Okay. Um, growing up, I had a very, um, almost little house on the prairie childhood. So I am the oldest of four. Uh, my mother homeschooled all of four of us. Um, from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So I've never been to public school. Um, you know, so we homeschooled, she gardened, we canned, you know, we did all of that stuff. Uh, and then my dad was a blue collar worker, um, has worked for uh, AT&T as a repair tech since I was four years old. Um, and just about everybody in my family has all been, always been more of the blue collar workers. So I never really had somebody in the family per se that was an entrepreneur. Uh, but I think homeschooling honestly gives you that advantage over typical public school for more of that entrepreneurial mindset. Um, Interesting. 
Yeah, just start the, the way we approach learning and, you know, my mom always would say, you know, if I if I had a question, something I want to find out more about, look it up, go look it up, go figure it out. You know, we go to the library before, before internet, go to the library, get all the books on the subject. And so I was taught from a young age how to learn and how to love the learning process and uh, how to do the investigation. So did you uh, <clears throat> enjoy the homeschooling? I, I know a couple of people that did homeschooling. Um, and it seems like it's been a mixed, mixed reviews. Absolutely. I think a lot of it depends on your parents and how they approached it. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. My mom was very flexible, you know, especially the older I got, uh, through subjects that I was interested in learning, you know, we would just integrate that into our schooling. So, you know, as a teenager, I really got into cooking. And, um, so there was kitchen science that you could use for your science subjects, um, things like that. So, and it was, it was very hands on too. You know, we'd always go on field trips. We did reenacting, you know, when I was a kid, all kinds of stuff like that. So it was, a, it was such a hands on experience, which was great for me because I am not a typical sit in a classroom with a book learner. Like I just can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a product of being homeschooled or I'm, I'm ADHD too, maybe a combination of the both, but I think it was an ideal situation for me. No, that's awesome. Um, high school you know going into did you end up going to college or did you just enter the the workforce um i did end up going to college eventually uh, i actually got married at 18. um i did grow up in a very conservative christian home so it was kind of you know you date to marry and that's what i did um so i got married at 18. i was working as a waitress at the time and then um i ended up getting a job at a local retail store uh, where I was at, I was there for six years, um, ended up wow. managing it for about four, uh, which was a great experience for me too, just because my boss was, um, had gone to school for marketing. So, you know, I got a great education from her just on marketing and running a business and everything like that. Um, at 21, my now ex-husband, I got divorced several years ago, that'll come later. But at 21, my ex-husband um, was, he did concrete and he ended up with some serious debilitating uh, back issues. We weren't sure if he was ever gonna be able to work again. So I knew I had to figure out something to be able to support us both if necessary. So I ended up going to college for business and got my associate's degree in business. Okay, and you were doing that while working at the store? Yeah, yeah. It was one of those online adult college programs. So it was something to get a degree and have something to present. Yeah, no, that's but, awesome. I, uh, I. <laughs> I tried online accounting when I was at Ohio State and online schooling for me is is no no good. <laughs> I made it through, but it was horrible. I think I made it. I think I made it like uh, you know, you know, in college where you get to either drop it or say you're gonna continue. Yeah. I got to like the drop it. I was like, Yeah, I think, you know, I can't me personally, I just can't learn online and yeah. um but so so you you end up getting from business. Mm -hmm. Um working at the store kind of lead me into those first, you know, career, you know, lead me up to real estate. So, okay. So, um, while I was in college, um, one of my classes, one of my favorite class, classes was a marketing class. I had an amazing teacher for that class. We connected really well. And our final project for that class was a complete marketing plan. So, you know, it's, it's your business plan with that focus on marketing. And, um, uh, my, my, subject matter for that marketing plan was creating a concrete company because that was something that my ex-husband really wanted to do and so i just based it off of that and in doing this marketing plan we realized how simple it would be to get this started so after that class i um we went ahead and formed the llc we started marketing um you know he was still working full time we were able to run jobs on the weekends and the evenings things like that until we got enough business going to where he was able to quit his job and, uh, you know, obviously this was after his back problems healed, but right. we were able to get that business going. And so we got that started and uh, I want to say around 2010, 2011 and, um, worked that for about four years, uh, grew it up to the point where we were doing a major, um, one of the big car dealerships around here was doing a major renovation. We got all their concrete work for that. So we'd actually put nice. it up into something really great. And um, it was about year four that I quit my job working at the retail store to focus on our company full time. Well, then a few months later, my ex and I get divorced. So we yes. separate. Uh, I get the house. He keeps the company. So I've got no job, no income and a house and trying to figure out what to do next. So I ended up getting a job waitressing 
just to get the bills paid and everything. And my long-term goal has always been investing, real estate investing. I mm -hmm. always wanted to, you know, have my rentals, have, do flips, things like that. And I'm back to square one and trying to figure out how to get there. And I always knew like, I don't do the nine to five. I can't sit in an office. You know, that's yeah. just not my personality. I get bored way too easily. <laughs> and, you know, so I'm exploring all these ideas of starting my own business. You know, what do I want to do? What's feasible to get started without, you know, a ton of money invested right off the bat. Yeah. And I was exploring ideas and I, I know somebody from when I was working at the retail store who had gotten their real estate license. And so I reached out to her and I, and I said, I'm just kind of playing around with this idea. You know, could we meet sometime? I'd love to talk to you more, see what it's like. And she said, well, why don't you just meet with my broker? Uh, let me set up a meeting with my broker. I said, okay, let's, let's do that. And um, so I ended up meeting with uh, Bethany Alexander, um, the broker of Rise. And I, I, I'm sitting in the office now, but I can remember, I was so nervous, you know, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And, you know, I get to the conference room and Bethany and I are so similar. Our personalities are so similar. We're, um, we're very high eyes on the disc assessment. So we're all about ideas and collaboration and yeah. so on and so forth. And so our initial conversation was just so great. And on top of that, what really kind of got me as well is in our conference room, you know, this is an old building with the big fireplaces and above the fireplace, she's got part of the quote from um, Roosevelt's speech, the man in the arena. And I remember reading that and that just hit me all right in the feels. And uh, so I left that meeting going, I am on the right track. This is, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. So shortly after that, I enrolled in school and got my classes going. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I want to talk, I, I, I want to go back to the marketing piece, sure. but um, that the man in the arena, um, we actually did a book club uh, in clubhouse mm -hmm. on uh, what, which one is it in dare to lead or, Darren Greatly. Brene Brown. Brene Brown. That's the first time I read that. Yeah. You know, and so um, I, I love that. I don't want to say quote passage. I don't yes. know what you would actually call it a passage, maybe. <laughs> um, but those that haven't read that or have never heard of that, make sure you guys go and, you know, yeah. take five minutes to, to read it because, yeah. um, you know, that's what that's what it takes in real estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, to be honest, blood, sweat, tears, being willing to fail, but showing up regardless. Yeah. yeah. I want to go back to the marketing yeah. piece and, and the marketing plan. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously I, the coaching company that I came up through and that's impacted my career is called NAEA. Mm -hmm. And one of the co-founders always would say the best marketer wins, mm -hmm. but the majority of us real estate agents, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make assumptions. The majority of us real estate agents, don't have a clue about marketing. <laughs> you know, we don't have a typically a clue about sales when we get into it. Sure. Um, what's the, just off the cuff, common, common mistake that, that agents make regarding their marketing strategy. Um, okay. I've got several here. <laughs> I'm doing a list of few that just come to mind right off the bat. Um, one of them is trying to be like everybody else not standing out, not creating a unique presence and a unique brand. Uh, you know, in my local market in Lancaster, um, there's over 500 agents in a community of 40, 45,000 people. That's a lot of realtors. How do you stand up above the rest of them? So, and so that you're, you're seen, you're heard, people know who you are. So I think not embracing our uniqueness is a big part of it. Trying to look like everybody else and do what everybody else is doing. Um, I think another part of it too is, and I'm sorry, I'm going to have some people get mad at me for this. The in contract posts, the just sold posts, nobody cares except for your mom. I'm sorry. Bring your client into this, tell their story. You know, people connect with stories. They don't connect with those salesy posts. So you can yeah. do them, but do them in a more unique way that explains how you solved a problem, how you brought joy to somebody's life. You know, bring your client into that to that story and tell their story because that's really what's going to stand out. So I think those are probably two of the biggest. No, that's awesome. 